Hey guys, Fukuno is Micey here with Android Police. Rooting has been around since the beginning of Android. I remember back in 2010 I rooted my G1 which was the first official Android phone to be released and even though the process then was difficult and tedious, it was well worth the effort because there were so many modifications and tweaks that you could do outside a locked OS. Nowadays with almost every smartphone already providing plenty of features, customizations, great battery life and amazing performance, rooting has become less popular. So today I'll be answering the famous question, is rooting your smartphone still worth it? Let's start with the pros. I think one of the main reasons why people choose to root their device is because of all the modifications you can make to your phone, like change the look of the interface, add extra features, and fix or improve specific things within the software. Magix Manager and Expose Framework are two of the most popular repositories. They each hold huge lists of mods that can be downloaded and enabled for their respective frameworks. Some of my favorites in Magix include Viper for Android FX to greatly enhance the audio, YouTube Vance to obtain a modded version of the YouTube app, App Systemizer to turn third-party apps into system apps, and Google Product Sans to give my phone the same font that is used in Android Pie. I'll be making a video soon on the top 10 Magix mods, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that video. As for my favorite exposed modules, I already made a video showing off my top 10 picks, so click that eye in the corner to check it out. The oldest and most popular reason why people choose to root is to use custom ROMs, which are basically a modified version of Android. With a custom ROM, you can often experience way more customizable options, a different looking interface, and software updates to versions of Android beyond that provided by manufacturers. For example, I'm currently rocking a ROM called Resurrection Remix on my OnePlus 5T, and I'm able to configure changes to the status bar, notification panel, volume panel, power menu, notifications, quick settings, recents, and more. I'm also able to add touch animation to my home button to make it look like the Google Pixel, change system animations, and modify the scrolling animations, among other tweaks. And lastly, I can add extra features such as App Circle Bar to quickly pop up my favorite apps on whatever screen I'm on, Pi Controls from Paranoid Android, or Gesture Anywhere which lets me create my own gestures to open any app or activity that I'd like. You get the point, most of these configurations are not on stock Android, and I have barely scratched the surface of the options available. If you're curious, some of my favorite ROMs include Lineage OS, Paranoid Android, and Resurrection Remix. Another common reason behind the choice to root a device is to improve the battery life, and while some rooted apps and services accomplish this goal, recent improvements in software optimization and modern SoC efficiency, coupled with specific low power state hardware, already provide great battery life and standby time in more recent devices. However, if you are still experiencing battery drain or maybe want to expand that standby time, then rooting your device isn't such a bad idea. By using apps like Naptime or Greenify, you can restrict apps from using background activity immediately after the screen is turned off. Think of it like Android Doze, but a bit more aggressive. For a regular device to enter Doze, it must be stationary for a set amount of time, but with Greenify or Naptime, it'll force Doze to turn on immediately, and you can have the option of moving the device around without leaving Doze at all, or for only short periods of time. While you can use these apps on a non-rooted device, the services they provide will be extremely limited. For example, on Naptime, it will only speed up the Doze enable process, and sometimes that doesn't even work, as some OEM modifications can interfere with that. Also, keep in mind that your apps won't be able to push notifications during sleep or run any type of background jobs, so make sure to choose Don't Optimize for the apps you still want running in the background inside the settings under Battery Optimization. Along with installing rooted apps to improve battery life, a lot of people turn to custom kernels to underclock the CPU. One of the most popular kernels in the Android community is Franco Kernel, and I personally asked the developer Francisco Franco if underclocking and undervolting were still viable options for improving battery life. He said undervolting is dead since chips auto-regulate themselves, and underclocking is easily the best, quick and dirty way to improve battery life during use, and a 25% underclock across the board can make miracles for screen on time. He also mentioned that sometimes underclocking a bit won't even introduce any performance hit whatsoever. For example, he underclocked his OnePlus 6 from around 2.6 GHz down to 2.1 GHz and hasn't experienced any lag or stutters. He even tested the performance with the same benchmark that Google uses for its internal performance tests and said that there were no changes in jank frames percentage compared to the default frequency. Also just a quick side note, custom kernels can give a lot of cool interfaces such as full on display calibration, sound amplitude, vibration control, the ability to block certain wake locks completely, security enhancements by merging upstream Linux patches, backports from newer kernels, and more. So from what I can tell, rooting can still improve your battery life, but the gains you'll see will vary. 
In my opinion, if you are rooted, it probably won't hurt to underclock the CPU just a little bit. I underclock the CPU on my OnePlus 5T by 25% and have an experience in hits in performance. And by installing an app such as Naptime or Greenify, you can increase your standby times or stop background apps from causing battery drain. For those of you who aren't rooted, you won't be missing out on much though. SoC vendors such as Qualcomm have made great strides in optimizing both software binaries and hardware for better power savings in recent years. They have this stuff down pretty well. Finally, the last big reason why Root still lives on is that of themes. On Android, you can already customize plenty of features, but with the rooted device, nothing's off limits. You can change the system font, boot animation, navbar buttons, lock screen, and more. However, the ultimate way to change the look of the interface is with Substratum Theme Engine. With Substratum, you can theme every aspect of the system UI, and there are plenty of themes on the Play Store to try out. Click the eye in the right corner to see my top 5 picks. Currently, the only non-rooted devices that Substratum themes support are Android Oreo devices since Google is preventing stock OMS users from utilizing custom overlays in Android Pie. So in the end, Substratum Theme Engine will only work on devices that are either rooted or running Android Oreo. So as you can see, there are plenty of reasons why rooting is still a great option in 2018, but there are also plenty of risks and things to consider before you unlock that bootloader. If you are someone who is just starting off and looking to root their device, I really recommend doing your research beforehand and being extremely careful. Installing the wrong app, flashing the wrong file within recovery, making changes in the system files, or even toggling the wrong button within a rooted app can cause your OS to crash or boot loop. So never mess around with something you have no idea what it does. But if you do get into a situation like a boot loop, there's most likely a tutorial online to get out of it. Another reason why rooting is discouraged is that Google and other major OEMs don't support it. Some manufacturers make it really difficult to unlock the bootloader, if it's possible at all, and even Google has created an API called SafetyNet that apps can call on to make sure a device has not been tampered with. Many apps that handle sensitive data will use this check and refuse to run on rooted devices. These include Android Pay, Netflix, Snapchat, Pokemon Go, Super Mario Run, apps for several online banks, and more. Magix Manager does have a couple protections such as Magix Hide, and most custom kernels can work around it and allow SafetyNet to pass, but it's not a guarantee. So if losing access to some popular apps is a big deal, try to see if there are a few workarounds available for your device, or just don't root at all. Finally, the last and most popular reason why people choose not to root their device is that they believe that rooting will void their warranty, and for the most part that is moderately true. And to be specific, unlocking the bootloader is why your warranty will be voided, not rooting. Anyways, I said moderately because there are a few instances where you can relock the bootloader, and some OEMs even support rooting like OnePlus, at least to an extent. But don't be surprised if your manufacturer won't help you when you try to boot up your phone and they see a logo of a custom ROM, or an icon of an open lock. In the end, is rooting your smartphone still worth it? You're probably going to hate me for giving this answer, but it really depends. It depends on what device you're using, what ROMs, kernels, or modifications are available for your phone, if the apps that SafetyNet block are meaningful to you, and how boring or amazing your stock software is. Personally, I find my OnePlus 6 to already provide a great experience without needing root. It gets constant software updates with new features, it already has most of the options I would want from custom ROMs, and already has the type of clean look that I enjoy, so I'm in no rush to install a third-party theme. And the same applies if I had a Pixel or Moto device. But if I had a Samsung, I would root the hell out of that thing. Even though it has plenty of software features, I would still want to remove the bloatware and install a custom ROM that's closer to stock Android like Resurrection Remix, but it all comes down to personal preference and how much work you're willing to put in to tweak the software to your likings. Either way, that's it for this video. Let me know down in the comments if you think rooting is still worth it, and please don't ask me how to root your device. Those questions are a single search away. Anyways, drop a like on this video if you enjoyed, get subscribed for more awesome Android content, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.